What you saw yesterday was uh, an additional announcement of additional troops to go in as advisors. That decision is simply additive to the train, advise, and assist mission that we've already been doing inside Iraq. We already have four sites uh, inside Iraq that are performing similar missions. This one is additive to that, so it furthers it, it strengthens it, it deepens a core mission area already of uh, our coalition inside Iraq. So it's not the strategy, it's a part of the all right. Uh, it's, uh, joining us now is Ralph Peters, Fox News strategic analyst and, of course, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, retired and author of Valley of the Shadow, a novel. Uh, hello there, Ralph. Hey, Steve. Great to speak with you. You know, this is like almost a bad movie. I mean, whenever we get together and talk about ISIS or what we're doing against ISIS or what the... I mean, two days ago, the president said there was no plan yet. Threw the Pentagon under the bus. Of course, the Pentagon has presented him with plans. He just doesn't care about them. And now he comes up with this. What's your read on it? Well, it's consistent with President Obama's patterns. And he is a man of patterns. Whenever there's a crisis of any kind um, or anything goes wrong, he does the absolute minimum that he thinks he can get away with politically uh, to, to just make it go away. And sending 450 more Americans, they're not all advisors. About a quarter of them would be advisors. The rest are support troops, security, etc. Sending them to Ambar province right now is putting a very small Band-Aid on a very, very large hemorrhage. And the president spoke of accelerating the training of Iraqi recruits. Now, wait a moment. Let's apply some logic. You don't have to be a military person to understand this. We had the better part of a decade, thousands of advisors and trainers, unlimited resources to train an Iraqi army while we were there. And we equipped it with some of the best equipment the U.S. Army had. And it promptly fell apart. And you'll hear no end of excuses. But the bottom line is, as Ash Carter said in a bout of honesty, the Iraqis didn't have the will to fight. And they don't want to fight for the Baghdad government. The Sunnis don't because it's their enemy. The Kurds don't because it's their enemy. Uh, and the Sh some of the Shia don't because, one, um, not every Shia believes in, in the kind of government the Baghdadis are giving. Uh, it's absolutely corrupt. And besides that, they're terrified of Islamic State. So we're not going to send this handful of advisors, and they're supposed to do, in an abbreviated format, a Cliff Notes version of training, what our regular forces in their thousands couldn't do over the better part of a decade. I mean, it just doesn't matter. Without the strength of will, none of this matters. Of course, training is important. Equipment's important. And thanks to the cowardice of the Iraqi military, the Islamic State is now very well equipped with U.S. equipment abandoned by the Iraqis. But the notion that somehow we can just take these guys off the street and train them and convince them to stand up to an enemy that is now very skilled. The Islamic State is a veteran military force now and ruthless. And these Iraqis look at them and say, what am I fighting for? They're going to cut my head off. So I, I, you know, I hope I'm wrong. But I, I think all of our training efforts in Iraq, except for the Kurds in the north, all of these efforts are absolutely wasted. Yeah, it's a shame, and I, I, I fear that you're absolutely right, and, and uh, I, I never doubt what you say, and I think in this case it's another example of that. And let me ask you this, though. Um, what <laughs> I, I don't know what you could say about Obama that you haven't said about Obama over all these years that you and I have talked and that you've been on Fox, and, uh, but Ralph, I, you know, what possessed him to stand up there? If we didn't have a plan, why for the second time in, a, in about a year and a half would you announce we don't have a complete plan. Why would you say that? And, and, and again, it, 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 if you don't have a plan, it's because you didn't want to act on anything, on any of the number of plans that the Pentagon has presented to you. Yeah, and that's key. You know, when he said, well, we don't have a strategy, he quickly you know, blamed the Pentagon and blamed the Iraqis. You know, Steve, after Pearl Harbor, within a month, we had a broad strategic framework to fight the Japanese and the Nazis. In the time since Obama discovered Islamic State in the same p period of months, we had <laughs> we had uh, taken Guadalcanal in the Pacific, fought the Battle of Midway, and taken North Africa. In the, the period of time since Islamic State actually started fighting, appeared on the scene, uh, w we had uh, you know fought the Battle of the Bulge and entered Germany and we're well on the way to defeating Japan and their home islands. And 
in all that time, Obama can't come up with a rudimentary strategy? Well, the answer is simple. No, he couldn't come up with one because he doesn't want a real military strategy. Our, our, the Pentagon has been giving him option after option after option. Obama doesn't want to fight. Above all, you know, he, you know, his priorities are skewed. The priority should be to defeat Islamic State, protect America by defeating Islamic State. You know, I don't care about the Baghdad government. Iraq's gone. Forget it. But defeat Islamic State. Attack them with all you've got. Instead, we have these phony airstrikes run by lawyers, trainers that aren't allowed to leave their compounds in Iraq and go out and do anything. He won't put forward air controllers on the ground. And his priority, his priority, his number one priority uh, in Iraq and Syria is to avoid civilian casualties. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. I'm sorry, but with an enemy that's fighting in urban areas, if you won't tolerate any civilian casualties, you're not going to defeat right. Islamic State. And to that, point, to that point, let me ask you this. We have a minute left. Has he not legitimized by what we're hearing about these phony airstrikes or the airstrikes where they have to turn around because they might harm a civilian? To your point, has he not now legitimized the, the human shield defense by terrorists? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in Raqqa, the capital of Islamic State, just across what used to be the Iraqi-Syrian border, we know, I mean, that's their administrative center, their command center. We know which buildings they're in. We know which departments where. But Obama won't hit them because there would be civilian casualties. And, Steve, it is false humanitarianism. Because Obama is unwilling to accept some hundreds of civilian casualties, he condemns millions of human beings to live and suffer and die under Islamic State. Ralph, that's a, that's a brilliant point. Listen, thank you, my friend, as always. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Steve. All right. Up next, folks, uh, writer for The Hill, Brent Badowski. But if you want to weigh in on today's show, we'd love to hear what you think. Uh, log on to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments and let us know.